Hey folks, welcome to another Broken Meeple review and today it's Reavers of Midgard. This just recently got properly released in the UK on retail. I think Kickstarter backers are supposedly getting theirs now or very soon. I picked up a Kickstarter version of this at Essen after hearing about the game, seeing a playthrough on the Dice Tower, but not knowing if I would like it or not. Champions of Midgard is the one that came before this. This is part of a trilogy they're doing where Champions of Midgard was a hybrid Euro, this is a full-on Euro, and the third one will be a full-on Amerifrash. Interesting idea, I'd like to see how that turns out. But I wasn't the biggest fan of Champions of Midgard. What? Looks the business, and it's a cool alternative to something like, say, Lords of Waterdeep. But the dice luck in it was just too much for me. You could, like, gear up to go for one big battle, the dice hose you, and you're crippled because you haven't got enough time to recover. Did not like that at all. However, I've not played it with Valhalla or the Dark Mountains expansions. I hear that fixes the problem. I would like to play it with those expansions. If anybody wants to show me that, then please do. And I'm maybe, maybe it'll elevate it to a point where I'm like, yes, this is how I want it. And I might even buy it. Who knows? I feel that if they can just fix that problem, then good. But we'll see. That's for another day. This, however, Reverse is the full-on Euro version. I mean, this is a full-on Euro version of the game. You know, there's nothing Amerifrashy in this apart from the occasional rolling of dice. And even then, it's easy to mitigate what those rolls are. But in this one, you are definitely the quintessential Reaver Vikings. You're going out and pillaging places and conquering places. And a lot of it is done with sets of cards. You essentially have a ship action and there's several, I think, five actions on the board five or six, and you place your ship on one of those actions, and based on player order, you get a bonus. So if you go there, you get a bonus that's better than the person next to you, and better than the one after, and better than the one last. You know, it might be, say, you go to a space and you can draw these two cards. If you go there first, you get two bonus cards. Next player gets one. They get jack, they get jack. And various, you know, there might be another space where you get to do three things at this space. Next player gets two, next player gets one, next player gets one. So the idea being that you, everybody gets a chance to do the action that you just took. Similar to how games like Empires of the Void did it. But with some like differences in there, whereas in that one you could kind of do different actions if you wanted. It was still that concept of, I take an action, now does anybody else want to also do the action? You could instead rest and get yourself a die on some food, but predominantly you will ideally want to spend the resources and do the action and do whatever it says. Now, the vast majority of this game is based around cards. You know, there are cards for objective scoring. There are reaver cards, which are like characters and crew on your ship. There's spoil cards with set collection for art and tapestries. There are tapestries. Yeah, I'm wondering how often I can get that joke into a review now, ever since I used it in a tapestry. But, you know, it's a cool film. I love that scene. But... You know, tapestries and art and uh, armor sets. You've got uh, three different tokens you can collect. Farms, walls, and towers, which you can attack and get stuff. There's farm cards where you can, like, farm, so, like, stall cards and that, where you can get resources, but also choose to pillage that place, which gets you more resources. But these negative pillage, like, tokens that look like Diablo, like, devil symbols, it's kind of weird. But, you know, there's, everything is about Cards. It's all cards, with the occasional tiles thrown in for the territories, but, you know, that's a, a minor thing. It could have just been a card as well. But it's all about collecting all these different cards and putting them into what is called your glory pile. Right. And yeah, if any of you are uh, more adultly orientated than me, then yeah, the, this gets a lot of sniggering when you play this game. But yeah, could they have not called it something better, honestly? Uh, if you're a kid, ask your parents. But, you know, with this, it's basically collect these cards, get points at the end of the game for lots of different ways. I mean, this is essentially a point salad Euro game with the Vikings theme sort of slapped onto it. And that's definitely the first aspect I wanna get into. If you're going into this looking for a thematic Viking experience, you won't get that here. I mean, you've got dice for the crew, you've got card collection all over the shop. One particular crew member doesn't necessarily feel like it's different from another crew member, apart from what ability it has. You know, the free clans that you've got, you know, they don't feel that different. It's just different things they give you with bonuses. You go out to claim a territory tile, you basically just spend the resources and claim the tile. It's, the theme is very kind of in this. Not to say there's no theme at all, and certainly, what they do do with the theme in this is, I mean, the fact you're pillaging stuff makes sense, but the, the way the board looks, it is 
gorgeous. I mean, I've got a play mat for this as well, but wow. I mean, this board is chunky and it is colorful. It is a, I mean, that's only part of the board and you can already see the color popping off this board. It's a bit busy and it, well, it does get in the slight way of people for graphic design, but to be honest, it's not too difficult to see where all the card slots go and where the action slots are. But when you've got the whole thing sprawled out on a table with all the cards everywhere, it does get a little bit busy. But the theme does come out in the artwork and what's on the cards. But yeah, don't play this thinking you're going to get a thematic immersive Viking experience. This is a point salad euro at the end of the day and probably, I would say more of a mid-weight one. I mean, people have said it's heavy. I think there's quite a lot of rules to absorb, so it's a probably more complex than it needs to be, but it's mainly just because there's a lot of rules. The mechanics of the game are actually pretty straightforward, and so I would put this kind of in the mid-weight to heavy sort of bandwagon, you know, that borderline there. Definitely don't play this if you're not used to heavy games in general, though, because I think this might overwhelm a few people with the ch options that you have. And you do have a lot of options. I wish there was maybe more locations to go to, but when you go to one location, you get like multiple choices of Reaver cards. You go to another location, you've got three different territory charles to go to. There's two locations that work pretty much the same thing where you take two cards, but in each one you've got about five different cards that can come up and you've got to think, all right, so hang on. So these work like this, these work like that, these work like that, these work like that. There's a lot to explain card wise before you get started with the game. And it can be a bit of a lengthy teach and certainly I think your first game is going to go pretty slowly as you adapt to all these cards and that everywhere. Once you get used to it though, the, the graphic design makes sense. It's pretty clear to see, oh yeah, that's a die for that face. That's a food, that's a favor, you know, that's this type of card. For the most part, it's pretty good. Although I will say the cards have like a circle in the middle with like a picture, like say of a village or a tower keep or something like that. It's a little bit hard to tell those apart on other cards when they say they score for certain things. You kind of, it's like, oh, this bonus allows me to draw one of which type of card? Oh, that one, I was saying, because the colors aren't quite that easy to differentiate. As I say, it's a bit of a busy board and it can make life a little bit difficult or a little bit fiddly to get things going. And certainly this is a quite a fiddly game to do because you do have a lot of these cards everywhere. They all do different things and everybody's triggering effects at different times and it can get a little bit like, oh my God, you know, whatever. Game plays for about six rounds and, you know, you essentially go through this many rounds of placing the worker down and getting all your points. And of course, the one with the most points wins. Of course! But it's not particularly different from a lot of other Euro games that you've played. You know, it's get a ton of points, have the most at the end, job done. The game plays two to four players. There's no solo mode, unfortunately. And I think this is actually one of those games that I think would have benefited very nicely from a solo mode. So it's a bit of a shame they didn't put one in, really. But two to four players, it scales fine. You basically change up uh, like how many uh, pawns you put down to do actions. Two player, you have two each. Four players, you have one each. And three player, you take it in turns to have two, one, one in a sense. So you always have four actions that are triggered every round. It's just a case of what actions. I do wish there were more locations though, because you find that the same locations get visited on a regular basis. And you may find that one or two locations don't even appear for a good majority of the game. The trading action usually only gets done more in the late game, whereas the one that lets you collect Reaver cards tends to only really happen in the early game. And then you find that the sea battles are taken by like one person, and mainly everybody is gunning for the farm cards, the keep cards, and the territory tiles. They are the three main actions that are used pretty much every round. You know, if you if you want to do the action, then you're only really going there for the bonuses. Chances are you'll find that somebody else wants to go there as well, and it's like, well, fine, I'll just wait for you to do the action then. But ideally, you're picking actions based on whether you think opponents want to do the action or not, or whether you want those bonuses. It's like, hmm, well, if I go to the keep cards, I know you haven't, you can't afford it, you have to spend a lot to afford it, you can do it, but I don't think you're desperate for what I'm after. So you know what, I'm going to go to raid keeps. It's that kind of decision making you have to make each round. But... It does feel very dry in how it plays. I mean, the idea that you're just basically collecting cards of different sets. I mean, here's some set collection. Here's a choice. Do you want the basic resources or the advanced one? Here's some tokens that get you majority scoring at the end. And a game does feel very dry. 
in how it works. I, I didn't really get the theme leaping off this game for me, other than how gorgeous it looks, and with the playmat, it's really good. Now, the retail version has just normal tokens in it, so and they're decent tokens. I've seen it out in production. It's a good quality production. If you've got the Kickstarter version, though, then you've got these game trays with, you know, like funky colored dice in it, and the dice are good quality. I like the dice, and you've got a lot of them in here. You know, there's a good amount to see in here. You've got recessed boards, you know, and they're in both copies, I believe. You've got cards that you can sleeve, which still fit in the box, and you've got a game tray for these tokens. Now, I think the retail version is a little bit easier to work with, though, in this regard, because those wooden tokens are cool, but I hate this when games do this. The way they differentiate um, one food and five food, for example, is a small drumstick and a slightly bigger drumstick. When they're all in the same cubby hole within a tray, trying to differentiate the small from the big ones is a pain. You know, I would much rather they, I mean, with the retail version, it's probably easier to do. I can only speak from having played a Kickstarter version here, but having to sort of constantly look in and go, wait a minute, that's a big food, that's a small food, da, 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 is a bit irritating, really. You're actually better off having two separate piles on the table just for one for small and one for big and just maintaining that than actually using the tray. But at least it makes for convenient storage when you put it back in the box. Uh, the tokens themselves are good quality. I mean, I like the recessed board. The recessed boards are good because you've got spaces for the dice, you've got slide-in for upgrades, you've got slots at the sides for artifacts, you've got upgradable actions at the bottom because the, one of the best things I like is the multi-use function of Reaver cards where you get dice when you take a Reaver card, but then you can either discard it for more dice, you can promote it to a leader so that the wild symbol on a particular colored die becomes anything you want, and you can also upgrade your actions at the bottom where the four main actions that are written down here, you can have up to three cards below each one, and then every time someone goes in that action, all of them trigger at once before the action resolves. However, that links back to my whole fiddly concept, which is you go to an action and then you first have to say, right, does anybody have any Reaver abilities? Right, okay, trigger them now simultaneously. Let's do that. I've done mine. Anybody else done theirs? Good, good, good. Right, now I'll do my action. Now you, now you, now you. It does take a while to resolve each action. I would have liked maybe more of the game to be simultaneous. And with that said, this is a 60 to 120 minute game on the box. I would dare say that's more closer to 90 to two and a half hours on the box. It can be quite long with a bit of downtime with four players. I actually think playing this with two or three players is probably better just to keep that time length and downtime down because with four of you, there's just a lot of effects going off, particularly by the mid game onwards. You've got Reaver abilities all over the shop. You've got all the different actions, multiple cards, multiple things just going. Boom. It, it does get a little bit fiddly. And so, really, this is more for two players, I'd say three players max, four players if you want, but I think it scales best at lower player counts, and sadly, there's no solo mode. So, all in all, I, I like it. It's produced great. I mean, yeah, it's a bit fiddly with those tokens, but it's nothing I can't handle, and certainly the Kickstarter version gives you game trays, which are great, and, you know, lots of cool tokens. You still get the dice in the retail version, and the retail version still looks really good. You know, there's nothing wrong with the production in the retail copy. It would also cost you a bit less. This is quite a pricey game for what you're getting, and certainly uh, that's a bit of a negative as well, just how much you have to pay for this game, which is essentially a point salad. But it does feel quite dry, but it is enjoyable. It is one where you do have some interesting decisions to make, and there's a lot of different paths to victory. The objective cards that you get might gear you to certain ways, or you might just pick a particular route, and you kind of need to stick with that route and not diversify too much, otherwise you will have problems. But there's definitely tension for the spaces, like, are you going to go there? I don't want you to go there because I want the bonus. Oh, you've gone there. Ah, oh, great. Now, where am I going to go? Uh, well, I could go there, but you're just going to benefit from it as much. Arr, it's like, arr. you know, you get the, the tension with the action selection and what cards you're gunning for and whether someone takes your cards first. But you can probably get away with two and three player and still have that level of tension without needing a fourth player. But it can just take a bit of a long time and it is definitely a very dry game. And as I said, the downtime can be a little bit annoying at times when you're waiting for all those reaver abilities to trigger, then you're doing the action and then you're waiting for the next person to do the action, etc. 
and the first player marker, depending who's got that, you could be waiting a while before it's your main action. And yes, okay, you can say, well, hang on, you get to do the same action when they do it, so technically the downtime's less, right? Well, yes and no, but if you actually think about it, I don't think you actually gain any extra actions in the game from simply just saying, oh, well, you know, on your next turn, you do something. Yes, you get to achieve more actions, but you could just have more locations and each take a turn. You'd probably have the same amount of interaction with the game. But I like this concept that you're considering whether someone will take an action or whether you should take the action in order to do it. So I like the game, but for its cost and certainly for how the theme is kind of lost and how slightly fiddly it can get. I mean, the rule book's not bad, but there were a few times where I'm thinking, well, how does this card work? So I don't think the glossary at the back caters for all cards. And some of them, sometimes you want a bit more like, you know, I need to know a bit more about this card. On top of that, there are one or two aspects of the game that I don't think uh, have much of an impact. You know, some cards can get you points for certain things, but it's just like, yeah, it's really not a lot of points. Why do I even care? And the negative tokens, I was expecting them to have more of an impact as well, but they really don't matter that much. You've got to, you know, you're finishing this game on anywhere between 150 to 250 points. Losing 10 to 15 points is not as bad as you might think if you gained a lot from it. And you need to gain about five or six of those pillage tokens to get that kind of negative from them. Because it's a triangular scale, 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21. So having three, even four of those is not that damaging really. So there's a card which lets you get rid of one of your tokens and give one to another player. Well, that's really not that interesting. I mean, you might have saved yourself a point, three points maybe, and you give another player minus one or minus two. It's such a small differential effect that they just don't really matter. It would have been much better if I'd simply taken the card that allows me to get a bunch of resources and conquer a farm, which could potentially get me two points for the farm and maybe five if I win the majority, you know? It's, it's more impactful. But I feel like the negative Diablo tokens, as I call them, which is kind of a wasted concept. They're, they don't make a much difference. I don't really care if I get rid of them or not. I just go, you know what? I want the resources, great, because usually you'll make up for it. And there's a lot of ways to get rid of those tokens during a game that they just don't really cripple a player that much. But all in all, I still enjoy it, but I am umming and ahhing as to whether it will stay in my collection or not because I have other point game, point salad games that I do prefer that also don't have a lot of theme. Pulsar 2849 is a good example. Pulsar 2849 is super dry, but then this isn't exactly thematic either, but it's shorter, it's easier to learn. Uh, the decisions in that one are probably maybe a bit tougher to make than this one. It's a, I'd say a little bit more streamlined than this one is, and it's done in a shorter time and still has a decent amount of variety. And it's like, I kind of prefer that one to this one really. But not to say this is a bad game. I think this is still fairly solid. And I think there's some people out there who are gonna get a kick out of it and really enjoy it. I still enjoy it. For me, the rating I would give this is a half decent seven out of 10. It has some room for improvement. I wish it had a solo mode. I wish it wasn't quite as fiddly with some of those components. And I just wish it wasn't quite as super dry and busy with just lots of different cards as it is, as much as they are nice cards and nicely produced. But I still enjoy it. With two to three players, I would be happy to bring this out and have a you know, a decent point salad game where everyone's ratting on each other's clans and you're doing all these combo plays with the reavers, you know, you can have different paths and focus on different actions, you know, there's a good amount of variety to keep you entertained, but I was kind of expecting this one to be a little bit better, you know, just a bit better than it actually was, but seven is still good, I would still like to play this, I just don't know quite if it's going to make a collection keeper I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to think about it, but for now, it's on the shelf, but it could be in danger if something else similar comes out to threaten it in the future. So, you know, all in all, decent game, but could be better, Reavers of Midgard. I'll be interested to see what the expansions do to Champions, though, which I've not played, and I would definitely like to see what this new Amerifrash version coming out that they will do eventually is. You know, I'd like to see how that's going to differ from these ones. I think it will be a solid trilogy all round, but you're probably going to be one of those people that picks your poison as to hybrid, Euro, Amerifrash, which one do you want? So that's it for me and Reavers of Midgard from Grey Fox Games. I'll see you on the next Broken Meeple review. And regardless of whether you've pillaged and torched down my humble little farm that was no harm to you whatsoever, it's still only a game. Take care 
and I'll see you on the next video.